Hello class, how are you? Um, thank you for joining me. Um, today I am going to talk about the financial projection spreadsheet that is uh, we are going to use to do projections for our project. Um, I've uh, recorded this session. I will be shareable on Noodle and uh, I will keep it uh, pretty brief um, so you can have time to work on the spreadsheet. So first, under Startup Financials in the Entrepreneurship Course Moodle, you will see this financial projection spreadsheet with assumptions. And you can click on and open it. I already opened the copy, so I'll just use the one I opened. Here you go. Under this spreadsheet, there are three tabs underneath. There's assumptions, there's projections, there's benchmarks. Um, before we start, we want to talk a little bit about financial projections. So when you start a business, unless you've been operating the same business or similar business for a long time, you really are not sure what will happen in the next three months, six months, or 12 months. So the best thing to do is to make an educated guess, which is what the projection is, to see how much money you will be able to bring in and how much money you will be spending and how much profit you will end up uh, having. The general rule of thumb, the general wisdom is that you will not turn a profit for some time, maybe from three months to six months, or maybe even more than that. So generally, we would like to get enough funding to start a business and run it for six months to 12 months to 18 months without counting on much of a profit. So that all sounds well and good, but if you don't know how much money you'll be spending and how much money you can bring in, then it will be difficult to find out the right amount and nothing is worse than having a really successful growing business but run out of cash and have to close 12 months in. Now you just wasted um, 12 months of your time, life and, uh, and your project is going down the drain, right? So we don't want that to happen. So we'll make the, some assumptions and uh, use those assumptions to generate projections for our project. So first thing on the spreadsheet, um, I made this spreadsheet myself and I made it in, you know, you can make this spreadsheet yourself in your, you know, in whichever way you want. But at least in this case, I'm building some assumptions, I put in some formulas, which will help you um, calculate uh, the numbers that you need to figure out how much profit or how much expense that you will have and then how much money you will need to start your business, basically. So here, this is a sample projection of revenue cost for peer-to-peer -peer closing rental service. So quickly, let me explain to you what it is. Let's imagine that you're on a college campus, which you are, and you don't want to run out to the mall to buy a, a piece of clothing. And uh, let's say somebody else have a new or very clean piece of clothing that they can lend to you. I, and I'm not talking about intimates like underwear and and, and other clothes of, uh, pieces of clothing that you're not you know, comfortable in sharing. However, I'm talking about overcoats, winter jackets, or maybe even a, a, a cocktail dress that you can wear to an event, but you don't want to spend $100 uh, at a mall buying. So you will be able to, uh, for example, go on an app or go on a website and be able to rent a this piece of clothing from someone else on campus that's your size and for that person maybe they have a coat where they have a dress that they haven't worn all year and they will probably only wear once a year and they can lend it out to you and charge a little fee for it so it's a peer-to-peer -peer clothing service sort of like uber for your clothes in a way right but put aside the fact that some of you might say well i never want to wear other people's clothes or other people might not want to wear my clothes um let's just assume that's a business and then also you know you go to the store and buy a piece of clothing, sometimes it's being worn in return, right? That's why you have to wash them before you wear it. All right, so let's say that's the case. Um, we will charge uh, some kind of fee, and then we'll provide some service to both the renter and the rentee, the person who is renting the clothes. So here on the left side, I have a list of items. These are the things that we can use to calculate the assumptions. So there's a few assumptions I put in. So to rent the clothes, we have a clothes rental, which at each single rental costs $15. This can change. So I can put in $20 and you see it will change the, um, the calculation for five pieces of clothing here or 25 pieces of clothing there or 10, 100 and 500, 1,000. And of course I can also put this at $10 and it also changes the numbers for me. So this line, Anything beyond this box is calculated for you. But let's assume we go back to $15 to rent a piece of clothing. 
And let's assume that it costs three fifty to dry clean that piece of clothing. And there's a one dollar pickup delivery charge that would charge them on on because somebody's going to come and pick it up to take it to dry clean. So this is these two are expenses. So that means fifteen dollars minus five three three fifty minus one dollar. So that's fifteen dollars minus four fifty of expenses equals to ten fifty of gross raw profit. So this is what you will make each transaction if this is the revenue, this is the cost, and this is what you end up with. However, I also building a net as loss assumption. So in this case, let's say a piece of clothing is no longer usable after some time, or somebody lost it, or somebody ripped it, then you can't reuse. So you have to give a refund to the owner, or you have to pay something for it. So I'm here making a very aggressive loss assumption which is we were we will lose 60 percent of the money we bring in on paying back so in a single transaction this turns into if i rent rent or lease the clothes out for 15 dollars and i pay 350 in dry cleaning fees and pay one dollar and pick up the delivery i have a raw profit of 1050 and i will have uh, deduct six dollars thirty cents that's sixty percent of 1050 as a loss a potential loss and then we we'll end up with a gross profit of 420. now we don't lose it all all the time every single time of course so we'll take this 630 and then put it in a bank account as a reserve as an insurance against your own closing so maybe you will lose a piece of closing after 20 times and you will have 120 dollars in that account to co cover for the loss of that piece of clothing and then ultimately we end up, so every single piece of closing, we will end up making a net profit. Well, this should be net profit of, uh, well, it's I call it gross profit because we have to deduct other net expenses later. So let's just call it gross profit. Gross profit of 420 and five pieces of closing will be $21 and 5,000 pieces of closing will be $210,000. All right, so that's the assumption we're making. Now we go to projections over here. Um, let me make it a little bit bigger. So on the projections uh, tab, we will have, again, number of rentals, the gross raw profit that's from the last page, uh, net loss assumption that's not from the last page, and gross profit that's from the last page. And you see these four, well not that, but these three correspond to these three. So if you say, well, I want to try different scenarios, you can change it on the previous tab, which I will show you in a second. But right here, we say the first month of year one, we have 100 rentals. That means we will have each for each, well, let's not use this one. Let's use this one, I'm sorry. So for month two, you have 110. The reason I did this was um, you're not going to have 100 for the first month. So let's calculate for the second month. And let's see if you have 110 on the second month. That would mean a gross raw profit of $1,155 based on this 1050. And then you will incur $693 of net loss. That's assumed. And then the gross profit will be $462. That's basically just 110 times of $4.20. Right? Why did we start with the 100? Here's an, another assumption is that we assume that the maximal, maximal addressable market was 2,000 people. I use this number because in Lincoln we have uh, 2,000 students, so that's the maximal addressable market. But in your case, if you pick a different business, you will use the maximal addressable market that you have came up with during the previous assignment. And then the adoption rate at the startup, which means the day you start the business, uh, the month you start a business, how many percent of the market you can reasonably assume to get. So in our case, I here I chose 5%, which translates to 100 customers, which I saw that's sort of reasonable. If, if you just think in a normal sense, if you have 2,000 students on campus and you launch this sh uh, closed sharing service and you do a whole bunch of advertisement, and you can sort of reasonably uh, expect that 100 people might become customers during the first month. Right. I mean, it might be less than that, so I can easily change this to 2%, and then it will just be $40. You see that when I change the 2% 40 customers, the whole entire spreadsheet changed. See? So if I do 3%, now it's 60, the whole entire spreadsheet changed. 
because I built formulas to automate this process. And second, you can change the assumption. Don't change them here. Change them on the assumptions. You can change the assumptions here. Um, let's say it's this is higher or this is lower. Let's say we're going to charge twenty dollars, and then we don't change any of the other assumptions. The gross profit will be six dollars. Maybe come over here. The gross profit is now six dollars because this these fields are linked to the previous page. So let's go back to my original five percent, a hundred to start. And you see month two, there's becomes 110, months two, well, you know what, I get the heading wrong. So this is single, I apologize. This is single, and this is month one, after month one, sorry. So here, for under month one, you have 110, month two, there's 120, a ton 10, month three, 121, month four, 130, 146, 161. So month to month, there's certain growth. I mean, it makes sense. You start a business, you're expected to grow. But how do we put in, choose these growth numbers? Well, I, incre incre I created the benchmark tab over here. The benchmark says the annual growth rate, I said, is 120% for the first year, 80% for the second year, and 60% for the third year. But that's annual. So monthly is 10%, 6.7% to 5%. That's just one twelfth of, um, of the annual rate. So basically, I'm making some assumptions here as well. I, I, I'm thinking that month over month, we should have 10% growth during the first year, and then the market starts to get saturated, and we should have 6.7% the next year, and 5% the third year. Of course, you can use different numbers, and I found these I find these numbers to be fairly reasonable, so we can use these. But you see what happens is if you say you're going to have 1,000% growth, monthly will be 83%. And the projections here, it's growing very quickly, right? 183, 336, 616, 11. But on month nine, you have 12,762 customers. Well, that's almost impossible because we only have 3,000 people on campus. So we got to be reasonable with our projections. Well, let's go back to 100%. Uh, I think I had a 120. All right, then back to projections. So now we have reasonable numbers, and these are really reasonable because let's see, let's let's look at this. If you start with 110 customers, by the end of year one, you have 285 customers. At the end of the year two, you have 619 customers, and in the end of year three, you have 1,100, 1,112 customers per month at the end of three years. And that means, in reasonable terms, that means about half of Lincoln students at the end of the year three are using your service at least once a month. And I think that's sort of a um, optimistic exp expectation, but it could go more or less. But this is certainly not really ridiculous. So then once we finish these projections, then you I mean the ex, uh, assumptions, then you will see what can we can uh, uh, project as our uh, revenue, expenses, and profit. So here, based on this sheet, now we're looking at, so at the end of the first year, we will have 2,148 rentals at a income or sales of $33,301. That means the revenue is 33,000. Expenses of $19,980 with a profit of $13,320. And at the end of the year two, you get these numbers and you'll end up with $31,893 as an annual profit. And at the end of the year three, you will have $60,790 of profit. And uh, of course, this is uh, the gross profit. You still have to, um, you know, minus administrative costs and tax and other costs. But this is a general pretty good way to project how much money you can make in the future. So. Um, looking at this, I would say that, you know, it's difficult to um, operate for three years and only make $60,000. So the only way to increase this is to increase the market size. So instead of 1,000 here, we might have five, 10,000 rent. Because we have 10,000 rentals, this will be $600,000 a year. But we can't reasonably expect to rent 10,000 per month at Lincoln because the small market is so small. So another thing you could do is you could do one of the two things. You can make the, the rental fee higher or you make you can make the the expenses lower, but they're already pretty low because it's four dollar fifty cents. Or you can make the neck assumption loss assumption lower. 
I mean, 60% is pretty high. I'm, I'm going to give it to you. It probably should be 10 or 20%. But you can you can minimize that by maybe buying insurance. So the insurance company is paying the loss, and you pay 20% of the loss fee as insurance. So you lower down this to 20%. And uh, you got to change the formula into 20%. And now the profit is twelve dollars, and then you go back to your projection, and you see that now we're talking about one hundred twenty thousand dollars at the end of the three years. That's almost doubled, and uh, yeah, they, that pretty much did double, and twenty six thousand dollars at the end of the first year. So this way, uh, you would have a lot more cash flow, right? And so, how much money would you be able to need? Or would you need every month? And this here's the here's the thing that gets interesting, right? Um, in this model, you will always have profit. So you you don't have any, the gross profit for every month is low is this way because you're not spending. If you're a student on campus, you're using an app and you're using a dry cleaner to to handle the cleaning. You don't you're not incurring any monthly expense. But if you had to rent a warehouse or if you had to rent a storage building or you have a storefront, then this becomes expensive. Then you have to start to outlay expenses before you can have positive profit. Then you have to borrow money in the beginning to cover your losses. So in this model, there's not much risk up front, uh, but um, it's also entirely possible. You know, let's say we start with 1% and the numbers will get much smaller. You only make 5,000 in the beginning and 24,000 in the beginning. And let's go back and make the loss assumption. Let's say no one returned the close, right? So the loss is 100%. Uh, let's see. And then we have no profit. And if you go back to the projection, there's no profit because it's perfectly evens out. And, and in that case, you will never make any money. So you wouldn't run this business. So you see that risk assessment is important because if the risk can be controlled um, to even that 50%, it makes a huge difference in the numbers you can actually make money. And if you decrease the expense or increase the revenue or increase or decrease the risk, but sometimes you can't do all three or any of the three of them, and that's when you decide whether or not you want to go into that business in the first place. So hopefully this has been helpful. This is the exact spreadsheet that you guys have on Moodle. Um, please review this video and then uh, you can use this video as a reference and then um, use the spreadsheets to make your projections and then use these projections in your financial planning portion of the business plan. And then you, you should probably, and I think I do require you attach the spreadsheet to the end of your business plan. Um, and you can use these projections, the gross profit projections, in your uh, PowerPoint presentation. Thank you very much. I will talk to you next class.